Although there are many different tribes of Native Americans, many of them share common beliefs. The Native Americans take much pride in their long hair. They believe it is the physical manifestation of the growth of the spirit. They have special ceremonies for the first time they cut their hair and often don't do it again. This is unless signifying the loss of a loved one or separating from past thoughts. The new growth is their life after. They always treat their hair with respect after cutting it. They burn it, bury it, or place it into a flowing river. It is believed that there is power in uncut hair. It is legend that during the Vietnam War, Native Americans were scouted by the United States military for their tracking skills. After receiving their military haircuts, they lost that power and were unable to perform in battle. In Native American cultures, names are very important. They have much meaning. This is because they are connected to the experiences and accomplishments in one's life, meaning someone can get a new name at one point in their life. For example, some people are like rivers. Some are very small when they are traced from the beginning, and towards the end, the river is wide and strong. Different tribes have different meanings for their clothing. For example, those that worship the sun wear bright clothing that pay respects to the sun. Some tribes worship the mountains and will have colors of clothing that resemble the mountains. Beads and stones are often worn throughout each tribe. They serve purpose in weddings, ceremonies, and the exchange of grains and goods. Native Americans often worship the five basic elements, so their stones and shells reflect water and earth elements, meaning their clothes are also a part of their religion. The Carlisle Institute began November 1st, 1879 in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. It was founded by Captain Richard Henry Pratt, who was under the authority of the United States government. They started with 147 students enrolled. Though majority of them were teenagers, the oldest was 25 and the youngest was six. During this time, many Americans believed that the American culture as a whole was decreasing. They saw the ways of the Native American as savage and referred to them as savages for many years. The Carlisle Institute was formed in hopes to achieve the same goals as the Hampton Normal and Agricultural School, located in Hampton, Virginia. Since 1868, they had begun converting Native American children to more Euro-American ways and returning them to their people. From 1879 to 1918, more than 12,000 Native American children were taken from approximately 140 tribes. Spotted Tail of the Sikangu Lakota and Red Cloud of the Oglala Lakota took pride in sending their children and grandchildren to Carlisle and advised others to do the same. From the 12,000 Native American children that attended Carlisle, sources say only 158 graduated. Life at the Institute was strictly monitored and surveillance. Pratt was said to be known as the man on the bandstand because his office was located in the center of the campus and he could see everything. Max Spotted Tail was just one of the many Sioux boys that was forced to attend Carlisle. Captain Pratt's motto for his institute was, kill the Indian, save the man. Children marched and drilled in military fashion Boys wear military-style clothing, and girls wore Victorian-style dresses. Pratt wanted his children of the Institute to not only be trained in the American culture, but also be trained to have American work skills. Half of the children's day was spent studying and the rest working. Pratt ordered a strict military curriculum, and any Indian child that exhibited their home culture was punished through corporal punishment which is any punishment that physical force is used to cause some degree of pain or discomfort. These children were also brainwashed into rejecting and hating their own culture. For example, they had Thanksgiving parades where native children would dress up as both pilgrims and Indians and have to act out the stereotypical savage Indian. This caused some children to associate their own people as bad or savage. 
They even went as far as celebrating Columbus Day at Carlisle and even sent some students to New York and Chicago to participate in their Columbus Day celebrations and parades. When arriving to the school, English was their new language and was the only language. They were never to speak their native languages again or else be physically punished with a severe beating. Children would also sometimes be sent to live with a white family for the summer or even a year. This was called the outing system. Other forms of this outing system existed farther west, but the children were put into groups to work and basically perform slave labor. This forced changing of environment, culture, and physical punishment by the white man simply for being Indian caused many children to suffer from mental illness and resulted in some committing suicide. Other children often tried to escape the institute in attempts to run back to their families, but the terrain was too much for their little bodies and they would die due to exposure or disease. The many suicides and deaths from separation anxiety, physical abuse, and lack of immunity were buried in the school cemetery. There are 180 tombstones in the Carlisle Cemetery and that doesn't even represent all of the children that perished. The Carlisle Institution was closed down in 1918, just years after Pratt was fired by the Bureau of Indian Affairs.